is took the position of honorary chair of World Usability Day. Um, I think it's perfect because the theme is communication, and I think there's no better communicator than John. John's won four Emmy Awards and three Peabody's, and in early 2007, he accepted a position as Distinguished Fellow at Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Media Lab, which is where I met him. He's the co-host of the, I mean, many of you have probably heard, the Daily New Morning Drive news program, The Takeaway, co-created by Public Radio International and WNYC, and editorial partners, the BBC World Service, the New York Times, and WGBH Radio Boston, which is great because then I can listen in the morning sometimes. Um, John has uh, written many articles for the Washington Post, the New Yorker, Wired, Metropolis, and the New York Times. He's written two books, one a memoir, Moving Violations, War Zones, Wheelchairs, and Declarations of Independence, which was published in 1995. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. And a novel, A River Out of Eden, published in 2001. And also, in your spare time, I guess you wrote a one-man show that was off-Broadway, <laughs> spoke man. We're really pleased to present John with um, a plaque of our appreciation and also a t-shirt. So I'm giving you the World Usability Day official t-shirt this year which says World Usability Day in Braille, Sign Language, Morse Code, and English. And hopefully it'll be translated to other languages. And I'd also like to present you with a plaque which says World Usability Day with gratitude recognizes John Hockenberry as our honorary chair for 2010. No, no, it's okay. I actually, I have an 11 month old uh, who will get great joy. I understand. Uh, Completely. Usability. Yeah. That's what it's I, all about. I, yeah. That's there a great story. But thank you so much, yes, indeed. Um, okay. Well, it is great that you guys uh, chose to come out here tonight. Um, there's lots of other things to do in the city of New York. Um, first of all, uh, how many people have a usability issue that they'd like to get off their chest? Just raise your hand. Uh, come on, come on, folks. Yeah, okay, there we go, there we go. How many people have a, um, a design issue, a, a design problem, a technology issue that is uh, sort of burning in their lives that they really would love to find the precise person to make their claim to? Hmm? Right, there we go, there we go. World Usability Day uh, has evolved from World Usability Nanosecond, um, which was during the telephone era, became World Usability Month, um, which uh, you know pretty much you know involved a lot of paperwork, government paperwork. What World Usability Day is an attempt to get beyond sort of the the momentary acknowledgement that usability is a, is a key feature of, uh, of, of, of humanity right now in its interaction and relationship with technology. Um, technology has uh, been dropped upon us in uh, this era uh, that really spans all of our lives and, and I think is the principal narrative of the 20th century and is a much more uh, disturbing and, uh, shall we say, uh, arduous narrative for the 21st century, technology has been dropped on all of us, and it has been up to humanity to sort of decide what we're going to do with the technology that's been presented to us. If you look at the brains of human beings, um, most of what we would call the sort of evolutionary track of, of human beings relates to their interactions with machines. Um, I t this morning, because it's Veterans Day, I spent uh, the morning with uh, an individual who's a former master sergeant uh, in Iraq who lost both of his legs b below the knees. His name is uh, Sergeant John Jones. And he's a you know, very you know, profound, uh, articulate uh, individual who gave you know, an extraordinary amount of himself in the uh, mission of preserving freedom in Iraq, and of course Iraq today, after eight months of sort of uh, dicking around, finally actually put a government together. Um, and, and, and so here's an individual who lost his legs below the knees, and he's got, um, how many sort of prosthetics do you think he has uh, at this point? Um, 
how many sets of legs would you say an individual has? And he's really typical of the veterans who are coming out of Iraq. Um, he certainly has two, right? He has, he has actually 11 sets of legs. He's got his regular sort of like business legs. He's got his swimming legs. He's got his running legs. He's got his sort of hot dancing legs that he actually wears with short pants. And, uh, and in the I, a robot era, as a lot of the veterans call it, um, the, the proliferation of various kinds of prosthetics that relate to specific human needs for functionality um, is, is a very natural kind of thing. And it really is a, is a consequence of, of the 21st century's aggressive sense that technology should serve us, not we serve technology. Uh, my my uh, uh, grandfather uh, was a veteran of World War I, and he lost his arm in that war. And, and the only prosthetic was a, that was available to him was a cosmetic arm that looked very spooky, and that we actually didn't like it when he wore it. And he preferred not to wear this, but it was sort of forced upon him in the sense that you needed to project that you wanted to be whole again if you had lost your arm. And he lost his arm just below the uh, elbow. And, and so he would wear this plastic sort of phenolic uh, uh, prosthetic back in the 1950s and 60s and, and hated it. And it was very, very clear that it was a prosthetic. It was cosmetic in the sense that it projected that it looked like a hand, but it had no use or no value to him. It was not usable in any sense whatsoever. In fact, the only utility that it had was that my uh, brothers and I would, uh, would make serious change uh, going around to the neighbor kids and saying, hey, come on over and you know, look at my grandpa. He's missing an arm. You know, see if you could guess which one. And when my grandpa would come in and visit from Ohio, he'd sit in the living room with his wife, and they'd you know, driven all the way from Ohio to southern New York, and uh, they'd be sitting on the couch, and, and sure enough, these little kids would like appear in the living room, and like, a, you know, and, uh, and, and it was only my mother that later learned that uh, basically it was my brother David who was betting his friends a nickel that, uh, uh, you know, his, his grandpa actually was missing an arm. But it was a spectacle. There was no sort of real sense that uh, he could do anything with his arm. And so the growth of the kind of prosthetic relationship of the 20th century to the 21st century is a hugely important narrative for veterans on this Veterans Day, but it also mirrors the kinds of technological narratives that all of us experience in the communication devices that we have in uh, the computers that we use, and, and there's a usability issue that relates to almost everything that we do.